This week, we are at the Ironman Austria in Klagenfurt. Spend time with Andreas Raylett in the starting blocks for his Klagenfurt debut. And meet some of the other contenders for the Ironman Austria title. Beautifully located at the edge of the Wörthersee, the city of Klagenfurt is nestled in a stunning landscape of crystal clear lakes and imposing mountain peaks. Once a year, the laid back atmosphere is transformed into the buzzing event of Ironman Austria, the fastest Ironman course in the world. Von dem Steg, der Pro athletes jump into the water from the pier, jutting 120 meters into Lake Wörthersee. The race starts at 6.45 a.m. and we hope for clear weather and good visibility so the triathletes don't lose their orientation in between the buoys. At the first buoy, the swimmers turn left and then make another left turn back landward before entering the land canal, one of the special features of the course. It is never more than 8 to 10 meters wide, leading the athletes through the last 800 meters to the swim exit. Athletes do two laps of the 90 kilometers on the bike, 180 in total. Along the southern edge of the Wörthersee, the course takes the triathletes through plenty of small towns and villages. There will be a great atmosphere with music, enthusiastic crowds, cheerleaders and aid stations for the athletes. The marathon is split into two laps, first in the direction of Krumpfendorf and then back to the centre of Klagenfurt, a really attractive course for spectators, providing an amazing atmosphere for the athletes. Andreas Raylett is one of the best Ironman athletes of his time, with an impressive record of four podiums at the World Championship in Kona in as many appearances. However, there is no victory to his name yet, and Raylet is chasing every Ironman's biggest dream. For the last four years, I've had unbelievably good races in Hawaii. Maybe those were already the best races of my entire career. But I'm still hoping that I have the potential to win the race one day. Dreams are not illegal. For the 36-year-old, mental strength is paramount for any Ironman. When we met him at a training camp in Mallorca, he spoke about the permanent struggle in long-distance triathlon. The mental strain to really torture yourself is something I had to learn to cope with. One can really evolve through these quote-unquote horrible experiences. Reaching a point where you think you have nothing left in the tank and then still finding the resources to carry on is something that surprises me. It makes me proud of myself. Das hätte ich von mir überhaupt nicht erwartet. Klagenfurt was Raylet's choice on his way to Kona this year, while Pete Jacobs, Marina von Hunnecke and Sebastian Kienle go to battle at the European Championship. He opted for the charms of Austria. Everybody has praised Klagenfurt. A great atmosphere with weather conditions that are nearly perfect and it's a fast course. A very fast one indeed. It is where Marina von Honecker of Belgium established the Ironman world record of 7 hours, 45 minutes and 58 seconds in 2011. Attending the pro briefing two days before the race, Raylet sets the bar high for himself. I don't have an eye on the world record at the moment. I think around 8 hours or even under 8 hours is necessary to win this race. That is my big goal. After the race briefing, Andreas Raylet went for a short ride on the bike course. For Raylet, Ironman is definitely an addiction. Finishing my first race, I was so fascinated that it has never let me go. The emotions that you live during a competition, the self-affirmation and satisfaction on the finish line is just overwhelming. It's early morning before the big day, and Andreas Raylet is taking a swim in the Lent Canal. In only 24 hours, the calm waters of the canal will be transformed into a frenzied washing machine. It is the same procedure that I've followed for a very long time. It's to get a feel for the water, 
Do one to two fast sprints for the body to wake up from the calm phase as training was less in the last week. The body needs to know this is no holiday. There is an upcoming race. So, who can challenge Andy Raylett on race day? Philip Graves of Great Britain expects a battle between Andreas Raylett, Mike Dwelzik and himself. There's obviously me, Mike and Andreas who should all be together, you know, out of the water. So, uh, I think it's just a case of playing your cards close to your chest and um, seeing what happens really. Um, I don't know whether Mike is going to try and press on and drop Andreas. But German Mike Dwelzik, who is travelling with his girlfriend and fellow pro Hilary Biscay, keeps it low-key for his first race in Europe in five years. I want to show a solid race on European soil. The weather is good, it should stay dry. 25 degrees, great, looking forward to it. <laughs> on the woman's side, all eyes on Erika Zormo from Hungary. The evening before the race, Zormo is one of the last lady pros to check in. I don't sleep well before the race usually, so my wheels start turning on the race like it's a, it's a hard day, you know, so I'm not really nervous, more scared. I know how much it will hurt. It's always hurt. It's an iron one. Swedish medical student Ursa Lundström will give her all to ensure a hard race for the favourite from Hungary. I really would like to have a, a fast finish in time. I always do. I do my best and I'm aiming for the top and I will see how far that will take me. On the evening prior to the race, a very relaxed Andreas Raylet also leaves his bike ready in transition. Tomorrow, I will put the filled up bottles as well as the bike shoes onto the bike. And then I just hope that I'm well prepared. It's race day at Ironman Austria. While age groupers are getting ready for the beach start, an illustrious guest has his eyes on Andreas Raylett. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching him. Obviously, one of my main rivals for the World Championship, so it will be good to watch him and uh, sort of see how he races out there. The pros are warming up for the swim, 6.30, and everyone is trying hard not to focus on the other competitors. You always go like, oh, look, he looks to be swimming well, you know, how am I going to keep up with him? And, you know, I was like sat in last night, lay last night in bed going through like, oh, no, what if I can't keep up on the swim? You know, what if I forget how to swim? Barely five minutes to go. Andreas Raylet arrives at the start. I just finished my warm-up. Once I'm here, I get nervous, which I try to avoid for as long as possible. This is one of the worst parts of the race, this nervousness at the start. But after the gunshot, the race is on, and then I'll be fine. It's a one-loop swim on the lake, before the triathletes enter the narrow Lent Canal, where the water flows fast and the swim speeds are expected to be high. At 6.45, the race is on for the pros. Only a few minutes later, around 2,400 age groupers thrust themselves into the waters of the Wörthersee for their Ironman experience. A long day ahead of them. They have up to 17 hours to make it to the finish line of the 15th Ironman Austria. At the front of the race, the pros are pushing the pace. In the lead, Bart Kolpert from Belgium who is clocking a swimming speed of 1 minute 7 seconds per 100 meters. Andreas Raylet is in fifth position as he approaches the first boy. Hilary Biscay of the US is the fastest woman. The only female swimmer keeping in touch with her is the Japanese Keiko Tanaka. Bart Kolpert leads an extended group of six, including Andy Raylet. While the mass of age groupers are still in the lake, an enthusiastic crowd of supporters are welcoming the pros into the Lent Canal. 
Bart Colpert, who has lost his cap on the way, is entering the canal ahead of the strong Spanish swimmer Santi Pellejero. Andreas Raylet, who is still in fifth position, is not keeping up with the lead pace, swimming at a pace of 110 per 100 meters. After 3.8 kilometers of swimming, Bart Culpet is the first out of the water, with Pellejero just behind him. What a start to the race. Culpet clocks 42 minutes and 54 seconds. With this blistering fast swim, Culpet is four minutes faster than Marina van Hunneke at his world record race in 2011. About a minute and a half later, the chase group exits the water. Among them, Philip Graves, just followed by Andy Raylett. Their swim splits are still very fast. Now it's time for Andreas Raylett to be efficient in transition before he embarks on the chase of Bart Colpert. The flying Belgian is already at his bike and will try to increase his lead over the strong field behind him. David Pleasure of Slovenia leads the next group out of the water. Six minutes behind the fastest men, the first woman have finished their swim. Hilary Biscay is in the lead. On her heels, the strong swimmer Keiko Tanaka of Japan. Erika Tsoma is still a good distance away from the swim exit as Biscay and Tanaka battle for the lead. Coming up, can Andreas Raylet close the gap on Bart Culpert? And does Hilary Biscay have a chance against the favorite Erika Tsoma? We are back in scenic Corinthia and Bart Culpert still leads the race. The highlight of the two-looped bike course is the relatively short but all the more steep ascent up to the Rupertiberg, where athletes have to overcome gradients of 11%. Bart Colpert is pushing a very fast pace. Within the first 25 kilometers, he has managed to extend his lead significantly. More than two minutes behind at this stage, the chase group around Andreas Raylet. In the women's field, Keiko Tanaka is up front. But behind her, the pressure is building as South African Diane McEwen is pushing hard to close the gap. In the meantime, Erika Tsormo has moved up to third position. While Hilary Biscay is rarely struggling on the bike, the strong swimmer has lost more than six minutes on Tanaka. On his way up to Rupertiberg, Bart Colpert has gained even more on his closest competitors. One third into the bike, the Belgian is looking very strong as he approaches the highest point of the race. On the last 40k, the chase group has lost nearly two and a half minutes on the lead. Andreas Raylet is heading the pack, including fellow German Mike Twelzik and Britain Philip Graves. Keiko Tanaka is still ahead of her fellow competitors, but she is visibly struggling as she fights her way through the mountainous sections of the bike course. Passing an aid station, Erika Tsomo and Diane McEwen are now in striking distance. On the following descent, the 36-year-old Tsomo overtakes the 29-year-old Japanese with ease. Soon after, Diane McEwen and the Hungarian are setting the pace up front. At the 92-kilometer turning point back in Klagenfurt, a passionate crowd is expecting the men's leader. Almost three hours into the race, Bart Culpert is the first to be cheered on. He seems determined not to slow down and to keep up this mad pace. Trailing by five and a half minutes, Andreas Raylet is leading a chase group of seven. Will Raylet try to catch Culpert in the second lap or will he rely on his strong legs in the foot race? As the women reach the turning point, Diane McEwen and Erika Tsomo are around one minute ahead of their competitors. Halfway through the bike, 
Ursa Lundström from Sweden is trailing by nearly five minutes. Diane McEwen carries on driving a fast pace at the front. On the second climb up the Rupertiberg, Bart Kolpert's escape comes to an end. Mike Twelzig has caught up with him and the Belgian is unable to follow the German's determined pace. The only one who's able to follow Mike Twelzig's attack on the climb is Philip Graves, clocking speeds of 45.42 kilometers per hour. Behind them, David Pleasure of Slovenia and Andy Raylett. Through their brave attack, Twelzik and Graves have created a gap of 35 seconds over Raylett at the 151.7 kilometer mark. Mike Twelzik is trying to follow Philip Graves, but as the powerful Brit's legs launch another attack, Twelzik has no answer. With 30k to go on the bike, Erika Tsormo has been able to create a gap of nearly one minute between her and Diane McEwen. She is now seemingly on track for her second Ironman Austria title after 2004. Five hours and 15 minutes into the race, Philip Graves has cheered on to the bike finish. He dismounts first, and like last year, no one can keep up with the powerhouse from York. In second place, Mike Twelzik, who's about one and a half minutes behind. Chasing Twelzik is Slovenian David Pleasure. Andreas Raylet racks his bike nearly four minutes later. While Ironman world champion Pete Jacobs cheers him on, Raylet is not entirely satisfied with his bike split. I'm a bit tired. It's not my best day today, but well, just like I said, the boys up front are really fast really good. Let's see what is possible in the marathon. The top five guys are all within a few minutes. They're all very close and uh, you know they all look pretty fresh as they head it out onto the run. Uh, they all seem to be moving pretty quickly and you know 42 kilometers left to run and anything could happen. Eric Atsomo is the first to enter T2 ahead of second place Diane McEwen. Ursa Lundström has climbed up the ranking to third position, two minutes behind Somor. The marathon is split into two laps, with athletes running on a two-way trail for most of the course. Athletes can count on plenty of crowd support, particularly in the centre of Klagenfurt. First on the marathon is the youngest Ironman champion in history, Philip Graves. Hot on his heels, Mike Twelzik. Andreas Weiland embarks on the run, around three and a half minutes behind the leading Brit, two minutes adrift of Mike Twelzik. But it doesn't take long before Weiland breathes down Mike Twelzik's neck. After 7.5 kilometers, he is caught up with Twelzik, and before long, he overtakes his fellow German. Andreas Weiland looks very strong at this stage but there are still more than 30 kilometers of the foot race to go. In the women's race, Erika Tsomo has built up a comfortable lead, extending it as she goes. <laughs> Ursa Lundström, who was third after transition, has moved up another position and now is in second place while Diane McEwen is struggling to keep up with the leading ladies. Back to the men's race. Andreas Raylet is seemingly floating over the course. He is now in striking distance of Philip Graves. Andy Raylet flies past Graves. And if he manages to keep up this extremely fast pace, the world record of Marina van Hunneke of 7 hours, 45 minutes, 58 seconds is within reach. At the 17 kilometer mark, Andreas Raylet has already earned a lead of more than three minutes on Philip Graves. 
After Raylett has overtaken him with ease, Philip Graves seems to be struggling to keep his pace. On the way through the centre of Klagenfurt, Erika Tormo is continually extending her lead. Will any of the ladies be able to derail her en route to victory? Behind her, a fight for the podium is on. Lundström is being chased by Emer Mullen of Ireland, who has moved up to third, trailing the Swede by around two minutes. The athletes were able to make a contribution to the Ironman charity by ringing the bell, contributing to funding a cure for pulmonary hypertension, a brief distraction from their personal pain. Andreas Raylet looks very comfortable and confident as he powers away at the front, continually increasing the gap. This is now the race of one of the fastest Ironman athletes on the planet. However, breaking Marina von Hunecker's world record seems a difficult task at this stage. Having passed the 32-kilometer mark, Mike Twelzik's deficit on Andreas Raylet is more than 10 minutes. In third place, David Pleasure, a further five minutes adrift. Further behind, British power biker Philip Graves, who is suffering from cramps. Before long, the youngster has to withdraw from the race altogether. Nearly eight hours after the early morning start, the finish area is boiling. The crowds are waiting for Andreas Raylett, who is on his way to clock a sub eight hour winning time. After seven hours, 59 minutes and 51 seconds, Andreas Raylett crosses the finish line. What a performance by the 36-year-old, running a two-hour 40 marathon to round off an amazing day in his Ironman life. Fellow German Mike Twelzig reaches the finish almost 12 minutes later, beating his former personal Ironman record by more than 13 minutes. And in third, David Pleasure of Slovenia. When I approached the finish line, I accelerated a bit when I saw the time of 7.59.40 seconds. The race did not go exactly as planned today, but the art of cycling is not to overpace. I knew that, that I would have all the chances to win the race with a strong marathon. And that's why I tried to keep up my own pace. The only thing left to say, I'm overjoyed. Great race. It was a fast course and Andy was pushing the pace. And the conditions were ideal today. It wasn't too hot, very pleasant temperatures. I'm happy with the podium. To be second behind Andy is like winning the race. Erika Tsomo crosses the finish line almost an hour later. Clocking both the fastest bike and run split, none of the ladies could get close to her as she was cheered on by a supportive local crowd. Ursa Lundström of Sweden claims second place, about five minutes behind the Hungarian. Imre Mullen, who won Ironman 70.3 UK only two weeks earlier, takes the final place on the podium. The Irish athlete pushed so hard to try and catch Lundström on the run and was so exhausted she could not attend the flower ceremony. I saw many Hungarians, even the uh, German-speaking people said something in Hungarian, <laughs> like cheers or something. It was funny. They, I, I loved it because, you know, it's a special feeling to lead a race. It's, you got so much support. So it just, I was just flying on their energy. A victory would have been uh, the, <clears throat> obviously the, the, the best. But I, I'm satisfied with my splits and I, I was struggling on the second lap on the run and I knew there were fast runners behind me, so I am really satisfied. While thousands of age groupers from 65 nations are fulfilling their personal Ironman dreams, the day at Ironman Austria comes to an end. After nearly 17 hours, Ursa Lundström hands an Ironman medal to the overjoyed last finisher. After his victory in Klagenfurt, Andreas Raylet is now leading the Kona Pro rankings. And like the past four years, he's among the top favorites for the Lava Crown in Hawaii. Erika Tsormo has also climbed up the rankings, featuring among the top 35 women currently qualified for the World Championship in Kona.
Next week, we travel to Frankfurt, where the Ironman European Championship will attract the masses. We will follow the Clash of the Titans as Pete Jacobs, Marina von Honecker, and Sebastian Kienle battle for the European Ironman crowd.